hold on to your seat because Earth is moving faster than the speed of sound. But why doesn't it feel like it? Hello, and welcome to the show about fun facts and a little bit of science. Today, we're going to look at how we travel through space. And I don't mean using rockets or shuttles. I mean how on this planet and within this solar system, we travel throughout space. In a previous episode, I talked about light speed and how space is forever expanding. And I'll add a link down below, so be sure to check that one out. That information isn't required to understand today's episode, but <laughs> why not watch two episodes today? When we think about our planet, we tend to feel like we are the center of the universe. It's hard not to, even when we know it's not true. It's just an issue of seeing from our perspective. When we are able to go out beyond our planet, we get a little bit more of an idea just how wrong that concept is. When we see Earth from space, it looks like a stationary object, no movement at all. Of course, we know that Earth rotates. That's how we get day and night. We also know that Earth orbits around the sun. That's how we get a calendar year. Since the Earth rotates on an axis, we know that's how we get seasons. But based on our viewpoint on Earth, it feels like we don't move at all. And this is where things start to get interesting. If you're enjoying this episode, leave a comment down below and let me know the kinds of things that you want to learn about in the future. And of course, why not click that like button while you're there? Based on practically everything we have learned throughout our lives about our solar system, we know that all of our planets orbit around the sun, the sun being our central point in space. Why does this happen? Well, the sun is a thousand times heavier than our largest planet, Jupiter, and 300,000 times heavier than Earth. This gives it an incredible gravitational pull that keeps Earth and our neighboring planets in constant orbit. As we saw in my other episode, the gravitational pull of a planet helps move our satellites throughout space. This is essentially what's happening with our planets around the sun. That link is below in the description, so you'll watch that after this episode. <laughs> We know about gravity because of Isaac Newton. One time he dropped something and said, that's why things are falling because of gravity. <laughs> Genius. But based on that information, why don't the planets just kind of fall into the sun if it has so much gravity? Well, the planets are also moving sideways. So imagine you have a ball attached to a string. If you twirl that string overhead like a lasso, you'll feel the tension of the ball wanting to pull the string out of your hands. If you let go, it would fly off beyond your reach. So your grip on the string is essentially like the grip of the sun on our planets, while the force pulling the ball away is like the constant tension on our planets. But both are happening simultaneously and at the right amount that everything just stays together. Let's hope the sun never gets too tired to hold that string. So maybe you already knew that. And the visuals that we looked at today are probably what you've already seen. But this generates two questions that we are going to answer today. How fast is all of this actually happening? And what does that movement actually look like? Let's start with the Earth's rotation. When you sit perfectly still, you're not really motionless. And I don't mean those kind of sort of micro movements happening. What I'm saying is that in one complete rotation or one day, a point near the equator moves close to 1000 miles per hour. So how are we not getting tossed out into space whenever we get close to the equator? Well, like we said about the sun holding our planets in line, gravity keeps us locked down. Fun fact, this is why Florida is the typical launching point for our space shuttles. They are technically getting a boost in their speed when they launch into space. Interestingly, this speed reduces as you get closer to the North and South Pole, since they are kind of like anchor points, which you would see on a, on a globe. But why don't we feel the movement? It's because you and everything else, including our oceans and atmosphere, are spinning at the same constant speed. If you have ever been on an airplane, you know that you don't feel like it's moving 500 miles per hour. You're moving together at the same speed. Now, if Earth ever changed its speed, we would all definitely feel it. Here's something freaky to think about. What if Earth suddenly stopped spinning? Well, everything on the planet would continue to move, causing worldwide destruction. It's the same concept as when you slam on the brakes and everything in your car just flies to the front. Luckily, Earth doesn't have a brake to push, and it would be millions of years before it would ever change its speed. Now, let's move out a little bit further. 
the calendar year, where we orbit the sun. It's at a speed of roughly 67,000 miles per hour, and our path around the sun means we travel 600 million miles every year. Now, let's go further out. We aren't just sitting here in the empty void of space. No, our little cluster of planets and sun are moving together through our galaxy at 483,000 miles per hour. This gives us our galactic year, which is the time it takes our sun to orbit within the Milky Way galaxy. Even though our solar system is moving at this incredible speed, it takes around 225 million years to make the trip around our galaxy. So far, Earth has only made this trip about 20 times since the Big Bang. Since humans have existed, though, we've barely made any distance in a single trip. Now, imagine a flat disk, like a CD or DVD, if you know what those are. That's our galaxy. Of course, not as perfectly round, but it helps kind of visualize what's going on here. That disk, or our galaxy, is made up of billions of stars that cause an intense gravitational pull. As the sun moves along, it pops up above that flat disk, and the gravitational pull brings it back down. But its movement forces it to pop down underneath and then pulls it right back up again, like a horse on a carousel. And it just keeps doing this about four times within its galactic year. Okay, but how fast is the Milky Way moving? Well, an unbelievable 1.3 million miles per hour. And as a reminder, light travels at 670 million miles per hour, but you'll learn that when you watch my other video, which is what you're about to go do right now, because this is, this is the end of this episode. So go watch, go watch the other one. As always, thanks for watching, and what did you learn today? 